Why? Why would you think that? You cited Einstein before as saying that force would be required, right? And now you're citing CERN, but people at CERN would disagree with me. What's your citation for that then? Well, the fact that CERN is actually breaking down particles to try and figure out, you know, what the fabric of the universe is. All right, that's a lovely story. What evidence have you got that CERN would disagree with Anthony Riley on Sleeping Warrior on YouTube? Obviously, you've got none. Well, hey, Anthony, maybe the good people at CERN aren't really concerned with what you think or proving you wrong. You ever think of that? Hey, folks, this is Bob the Science Guy, and greetings from northern Michigan. Today, we're going to have another look at the debate, if you want to call it that, between Fight the Flat Earth and Anthony Riley. Now, the rules are going to be the same for this episode, and that is that every time Anthony Riley says, snap the wand of Newton or some variation of that, you have to take a drink. Now, in honor of Mr. Riley's determination that density was actually a force, that drink is going to have to be a multi-layered tequila sunrise. So let's cue up the music and get this dumpster fire started. CERN, so, you know what CERN does, right? They smash particles together to... Allegedly. Allegedly, right. Okay, that humongous thing is just there doing nothing. Yes, right. So what is CERN going to prove to us, right? Come on, CERN, CERN, CERN going to prove? prove how... Um, well, in fact, it has proven that um, a Higgs field is a thing. <sighs> Lovely story. What's that? Right, I'll give you CERN. You can have CERN. I'm not interested in CERN. Well, there you go. With a wave of his hand, Anthony Riley just acknowledges CERN and everything that it's ever done. That's kind of cool. And it joins his acknowledgement that Cavendish me measured mass attracting mass and that the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon. LIGO, gravitational waves, detection of gravitational waves. Yep. Is that science or is that pseudoscience? Mm, that's science. It's How is it science? It's Measurement. Ah, right. So... So you you ascribe then therefore that Bob from Globusters proved the rotation of the Earth with his measurement, right? Yeah, that the so that gyroscope very much proved the rotation of the Earth at fifteen degrees per hour. Right. So therefore, you would then agree with me that if if you're if you're going to say that Bob proves summit, that if you're going to say that he measured summit, he's got to also manipulate your independent variable to prove that it is the cause of the effect that you believe you're witnessing. Do you agree with that? Well. I didn't say he did an experiment. I said he did a measurement. No, but we did say prove. I did say I did use the word prove intentionally. Well, you you do know that uh, I've I've kind of said the words wrong sometimes. I always say the word proof, but that's not really you know, what, what science does. Science ex tries to explain things. Like science no, it doesn't. isn't really there to to prove anything. No, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, right on screen right now, I've got an article for. I'll send you a copy of it in the chat. Bear with me. This is what science actually does. There's your copy, and it is at the top of page, uh, bottom of page three. Uh, uh, the average layperson may think of the above picture and think of something that this may be true in some disciplines. No, no, hang on. It's go to go to the bottom paragraph, um, just above the word experiment. Once the hypothesis has been established, it's time to test it. The process of experiment. It's really designed to prove or disprove the hypothesis. No, you're on the wrong. Sorry, you're on the wrong paragraph. Um, go oh, to the, the you mean the bit where it says about disproving or disproving the hypothesis? No. Now the technique Anthony is using here is to try and cherry pick through this multi-page article that he has because he found a definition of science that he liked. I just went to Google and hit the first one that said science on it, and that's a pretty good one. I think everybody will agree. Now, why wouldn't Anthony just pick the very first reasonable definition of science that came up when you do a Google search? Well, let's look at this and see if there's a couple of problems. First of all, it says exactly what Craig said, so therefore we can't use it, right? Second, it doesn't include a very specific reference to the scientific method, and more importantly, his definition of the scientific method that says the investigator must personally manipulate the independent variable. And third, it refers to both observation and experiment. Anthony's position is that anything that is not experimental science is not science, allowing him to disregard anything to do with observational science or theoretical science. But let's go see where he's taking this, and let's see Craig's reaction to it. 
No, it says one thing is clear about the requirements of the testability of the hypothesis. It must exclude supernatural explanations. And I'll say that that's gravity. But anyway, it carries on. If the supernatural is defined as events or phenomena that cannot be perceived by natural or empirical senses, then they do not follow any natural rules or regularities and so therefore cannot be scientifically tested. Now do you guys recall Anthony saying something about the reason that these density column layers layered out the way they did was ipso facto? because they do? Well, that's exactly what he's talking about here, about things that aren't science and being supernatural. It can't be studied. It just is what it is, ipso facto. Now, with regards to testing summit that you measure, the, if you're going to claim that Bob proves the rotation of the Earth by measuring 15 degrees an hour with a fog, a fiber optic gyro, you have to manipulate that thing that you believe is the cause it is required and I, I can put them on screen right now there's like right, okay let me rephrase what what right it's an evidence for the rotation of the earth sure. well anthony you make a very good point there words do have a meaning in science for example weight is mass times the acceleration of gravity that is what weight is and every time you use the term weight that's what you're talking about. Sure, but words of precise meanings in science, right? Yeah. They're not, they're not right. wishy-washy. I'm, I'm, I'm retracting the, 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 when I said it proves because I, I don't like to use the word proves anyway. What Bob so did, did so, was so gave us a very good evidence it, of the rotation of the Earth. Craig, if you're retracting it, does that mean, therefore, that Bob did not prove something about the rotation of the Earth? Like, like I'm saying, Bob gave us very good evidence, right? And I it, agree. It can go towards the body of evidence that, that we have of other things. So did he or did he not prove the rotation of the Earth? No, he gave us evidence for the rotation of the Earth. That's so the I'm answer is say. no. The answer is no. And I agree, he didn't. He, he measured something, but he, can't, he doesn't know what was measured. And well, let's just be really what he clear as well. was a 15 degree shift, right? And yeah, well, we let's know just be that, clear. Let's, that, let's was, just be clear. that is what you would expect, right? Let's just sure. So Bob didn't actually prove anything, did he? Somebody else may have proved something, and the thing that they may have proved definitely wasn't the Earth rotation because it was subject to the measurement of 15 degrees that could be the sky too. Agreed? Um, no, I, that's not how uh, a gyroscope works. Okay, this is an Anthony Riley closer right here. What he did was he got Greg to admit that Bob wasn't the person that actually did the test, even though he started off his questioning, did Bob prove the rotation of the Earth with his gyroscope? Then once he got that admission, he started hammering him with question after question after statement after question, right? So without giving Craig a chance to respond, Anthony says, Bob didn't prove anything, a statement. Someone else may have proven something, another statement, again using the word proof, but it was definitely not rotation. That's another statement. It may have been the sky or something else, which is an alternative. And then he yells out, agreed. Fortunately, Craig was on the ball and stopped him in his tracks by saying no. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're going to tell me how a fiber optic gyroscope works, are you? Yeah. Go on. Now, rather than try and recoup, he tries to take Craig off, off his game again by saying, oh, you're going to tell me how a fiber optic gyroscope works. Well, unfortunately for Anthony, Craig could probably tell him. The problem is, is I don't think Anthony would understand the answer. A uh, fiber optic gyroscope works by measuring the difference in the, the light that's traveling around it and the, yeah. where it is based on the movement of so what it's on. Not the movement of what, no, not based on the movement of what it's on. It measures the light around it, full stop. That's where it stops. It's not relative to the movement it's on. It's, it's, it's... Okay, do you notice how very subtly Anthony is trying to redefine the actual function of a gyroscope and how a gyroscope works by bringing up the fact that it traces light around a path and then trying to say that, well, that is any light that could be measured, full stop? Recall that these gyroscopes are certified for use in navigation where lives are at stake. The purpose and sole function of a gyroscope is to determine the location spatially of an object in reference to pitch, yaw, and roll. Yet here, because the gyroscope measured 15 degrees per hour rotation when sitting on a table on Earth, 
he's trying to redefine the function of a gyroscope into that into saying that that means that something somewhere is rotating at 15 degrees per hour it could be the starlight it's on it's it's the light around it but if we see the stars are already moving around us and we think the stars are moving and it measures 15 degrees of star of the light moving around it that actually supports the idea that we're stationary and it's the stars moving above us yet you ballers rep misrepresent what's actually going on and you don't address the second part which he says which is if it was really the earth rotating the the uh, physical mechanical gyros would also show that 15 degrees because they do measure momentum whereas the and font, I can um, give measure you light a um, video that shows a mechanical gyro compass doing exactly that. You know, just to interject here, Anthony, you might want to maybe look up this thing here called a gyro compass and figure out how it operates. Might answer a few of your questions. As a matter of fact, I might do a later video on it because a gyro compass actually uses gyros interacting with the rotation of the Earth to find true cardinal directions. Is it inside some other receptacle that's software controlled? Uh, no, it is sitting on a bed of water. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Has it been repeated by anybody? Is it va scientifically validated as conforming with the scientific method? If not, we're not going to be accepting it. Oh, well, many things you presented me, Evan, but what I can present you with is evidence. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Now, Anthony apparently doesn't know what Craig has there, but you can see him starting to panic now. He's already said that, you know, I'm going to reject this unless it's done by scientific method. Has it been verified? And, you know, blah, 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 derpa, derpa, derpa. Now, mind you, a gyro compass has been in operation for navigation on the oceans for quite some time, decades, if not centuries. Now, just remember, you are not the ultimate authority uh, of deciding what is valid and un invalid in scientific and pseudoscience, Anthony. This is a certified instrument for navigation. That's really all we need to do with it. We don't need to go over the gauge of the wires or the metallic composition of the disks. The bottom line is, this is a gyro that interacts with the rotation of the Earth to find true cardinal direction. It's settled science and proven technology. All right, I'll give you the evidence that you present. I'm not sure what you're going to present, but I don't really want to dwell on it. My point at this point is that the fiber optic gyro measures 15 degrees of something moving, but doesn't prove what is moving. If we can agree with that, we can move on and you can have your point. This is great. What, do you, what, what do you want me to do with this plate? Um, well, that, that, um, you, uh, that, you can look at that another time, but that is showing a mechanical gyro compass measuring the 15 degree rotation and finding true north. So uh, a guy so called that, that is showing the the same effect as the 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 um, gyroscope that Bob or whoever was using, but in a mechanical sense. So, so it's you're, showing you're, that you're actually going to cite a guy called Go Scott McPeak Gaming, who seems to be a gamer with forty six subs, as a credible explanation for a gyro compass. Really, is that really the credibility? Well, it's, of what it's you're... the only actual one that I could find on YouTube, but um, it's something that I'm trying to replicate myself to to, to do as well, and you know. Now here's another technique Anthony likes to use a lot, and I've seen him use it a few times, and that is that he's presented with overwhelming and irrefutable evidence that there is such a thing as a gyro compass that does actually work and does have a gyroscope interacting with the rotation of the Earth. So rather than address that, he's going to sit down and mock the person that put the video up. So what if he's got 44 subs? I have three, four times the number of subs that you have. So that's a losing hand for you. Hopefully Craig's going to point this out to him and not play into this little game. No, I'll give you that it's evidence, right? But when it comes to the credibility and the strength of the evidence, some bloke with 46 subs called Scott McPeak Gaming is not that it's credible. It's not the most credible source in the world, okay. but it is, it is an evidence and it is a starting point that people could repeat themselves. All right, I agree. Uh, it is evidence. And what I'll do is I'll respectfully charge Bob with um, a Summit for Globebusters content. So I'm pretty sure he'll be happy to address this on a Globebusters. Do you ever watch Globebusters, uh, Craig? I, I, um, I have done. I got banned the first time I ever spoke on there. But uh, yeah. Well, I'm um, pretty sure that given that this nature is t this t the topic, the nature of this topic is quite contentious and current. I'm pretty sure Bob will be happy to have a look at this. I, I, and I'm I, pretty would, sure... I would like to hear Bob's explanation of this. And, and again, you know, this is just one random guy on YouTube with a few subs, but it, it's something subs. that other people could do, right? 
46 subs. Let's, yeah. Let, not I mean, you. we all start somewhere, right? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm sure Bob will oblige. I'm, I think he's in chat, actually. He was in chat earlier on. I don't know if he still is. But I'm pretty sure if anybody's out there that's getting that's paying attention, just let Bob know that he's got a challenge on the table from a bloke with 46 subs, and I'm hoping that he'll address it. I'm pretty sure he'll be able to rattle this off for you, no problem. But anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> Thanks again, for the that, that's just one, one evidence. I mean, the, when I first looked... Craig, just a little hint. You need to stop apologizing and just call him out on this nonsense. It doesn't matter how many subs the guy has. He's got a freaking gyro compass. We know what a gyro compass is. Stand on the strength of your evidence. Anthony wants to concentrate on the guy's 46 subs because he knows that you have trapped him and backed him into a corner that he cannot get out of. So he's trying to force you into defending the person that put this video up, which has nothing to do with what the content of the video is. And unfortunately, you're falling for it. You know, on, on YouTube a, a few months ago for, for this, that's just the first thing that came up and anyone can find that and see it. And more importantly, it's something that anybody can repeat for themselves. And I'm sure like they'll I said, do it. That there's, there's nothing there that's any less valid than what Bob did. All would, right. Would, would you I'm... agree with that? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the video. I don't know what you're asking me to agree or disagree to. All I'm saying is that it'll be put under his nose, and if he chooses to address it, he probably will do because he likes doing stuff like this. He yeah. might not do. He, he I, might. I'd, like, I'd like to hear you know, again. I, I agree with you that it's not the most credible source in the world, but it, it is an evidence that this happens, and it's in a way that anybody can repeat and do themselves. I've given him a thumbs up to, to show support. He beat you on that one, Craig. You need to take control of this interview again. That's all I'm going to say. Now, Craig, overall you won this debate simply because you have all of the facts on your side. The only reason that I'm giving you uh, a lost point here is the fact that you let him distract you. Now, let's take the next part of the debate tomorrow. Anthony's going back to gravity on that one, so that's a completely different subject. He's going to hit the gravity density thing again. So let's take a break here. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.